The environmental conditions under which African violets are grown are favorable for insect population growth as well. All parts of the violet may be attacked by insect and night pests. This includes the flowers, leaves, and the roots. Insects attacking African violets may be divided into three different groups, the chewing pests, the sucking pests, and the nuisance pests. Chewing pests actually consume plant tissue. The symptoms of chewing pests include holes in the leaves or petals, severed leaves or buds, and discolored areas on the surface of leaves or flower petals. The most frequently reported chewing pest of African violets is the cockroach. Cockroaches are notorious for feeding on flower buds, and they can devastate a plant overnight. Cockroaches are active at night and may cause severe damage before discovered. They are easily controlled with boric acid baits or any approved spray. The plants themselves usually do not need to be sprayed, just the shelves, baseboards, floral carts, and any nearby hiding place, such as closets or storage rooms. Loopers, often called inchworms or measuring worms, are the immature stages of moths. They are foliage feeders and are capable of causing extensive damage to violets. The adult moths are attracted to light and thus are occasionally attracted to and trapped in a home or greenhouse. Here they lay eggs on the plants. When the eggs hatch, the larvae begin to feed on violet leaves. Generally, only a few are found and hand picking is a good method of controlling the pest. Sprays containing seven, Malthion or Bacillus thuringiensis are also effective. Numerous other foliage feeding larvae are occasionally found feeding on African violets. These include the orange striped oakworm, a pest that commonly feeds in trees. It is occasionally brought into the home on clothing or equipment. The salt marsh caterpillar is often called the woolly bear. This pest migrates in large numbers. Some find their way into homes and cause serious damage to houseplants, including violets. The desert moth larvae is also a tree feeder, which occasionally drops into greenhouses or homes. It will feed on violets, but seldom causes serious damage. Zips are a common chewing pest of African violets. Several species are found in the U.S. Zips are very small, and as many as 15 to 20 may be found in a single blossom. Zips are predominantly pollen feeders, but they will rasp away the tissue on tender leaves and flower petals. Damaged blossoms will be undersized and not shaped properly. Heavily damaged blossoms will be severely stunted and deformed. Infested plants may have normal blossoms and deformed blossoms on the same flower stalk. This gives the plant a lopsided appearance and seriously detracts from the beauty of the plant. Sucking pests insert their mouth parts into plant tissue and feed on plant juices. Symptoms of sucking pests include a wilting or yellowing of plants and the presence of honeydew on the leaves. Aphids are a common pest of violets. They reproduce rapidly and can build up large populations quickly. Some aphids have wings and some do not. Aphids are somewhat sluggish and are reluctant to stop feeding and move even when merged with a pencil or other sharp instrument. Plants heavily infested with aphids will have a yellowish, droopy appearance. White flies are very small, milk-white insects that fly about when the plant is disturbed. Immature white flies are attached to the underside of leaves. Heavily infested plants may become sticky with honeydew produced by this pest. Several species of scale insects will attack African violets. Most are found on the underside of the leaves but they may be found on the top of the leaves or on the leaf petiole. Marathion and Saigon are effective for controlling scales. Small infestations may be controlled by removing infested plants from the culture before they spread. Foliar mealybugs frequently attack African violets. Four or five species will cause damage. If an infestation is neglected, these pests can literally cover a plant. Heavily infested plants may turn blackish, due to a mold growing on honeydew produced by the mealybugs. Heavy infestations may cause leaf tips or even the whole leaf to die and turn brown. A very serious pest of commercial and non-commercial African violets is the soil mealybugs. Three or four species of soil mealybugs will attack African violets. The most common is probably the Pritchard mealybug. Due to their small size and habits, they are usually not detected until heavy infestations build up. 
This pest feeds in the root ball, seldom coming to the surface, unless populations are very heavy. Among the root systems of an infested plant may be found small cottony masses. These contain mealybug eggs. Upon hatching, the immature begin to feed on the root hairs. A good sign of mealybugs in a root ball is the presence of white filaments or fine webbing throughout the soil ball. Having any damaged roots appear brownish and are devoid of root hairs. A healthy root will be whitish and will have many root hairs on it. Heavily infested plants, if allowed to stress for water, temperature, or nutrients, will quickly begin to turn yellow. Infested plants have fewer and smaller blossoms. Soil mealybugs should be treated with a drench containing an approved pesticide such as diagonine or saigon. Thorough application is necessary for control. Also, all infested mats, reservoirs, and equipment need to be sterilized or treated. The cyclamen mite is barely visible when magnified ten times. Seldom a cyclamen mite stand before damage is noticeable. This pest inserts its mouth parts into a cell and feeds on the cell's sap. Cells dry up, causing deformed foliage. Early symptoms of cyclamen mites show up in the tender terminal of the plant as a whitish or fuzzy center. When populations explode, every flower on a plant may be completely desiccated or dried in a couple of days. If not treated promptly, this pest will kill out the center of a plant. Infested plants will recover once the mite infestation is controlled. However, this takes time and recovering plants will have deformed leaves for a while due to toxic compounds injected into the plants when the mice are feeding. A whole new center must be grown and deformed leaves may be removed as the plant grows and is repotted. Cyclamen and mites attack many wild and cultivated plants and are easily spread to greenhouses on other plants, clothing, or on contaminated equipment. Cyclamen mites may be controlled with products containing orphine, diazonon, carthane, or thiodan. The bread mite also attacks African violets. This mite prefers the older leaves and may be found on the upper and lower leaf surface. Damage from this mite appears as a darkened scar tissue on the leaf near the base of the leaf next to the petiole. A number of insects found on violets cause little or no damage. They are often a nuisance to growers. Pearl bugs dig soil out of drain holes and frequent cutting flats. They can be a damaging pest to very small seedlings. Slugs leave unsightly trails on sidewalks, plant leaves, and pots. Some species will feed on violet leaves. Columbula, or springtails, are extremely abundant. One four-inch pot may harbor more than 1,000 of these small insects. Unbelievable numbers can build up in warm, humid greenhouses. These pests feed on decaying organic matter. Many species can be found throughout the U.S. Fungus gnats thrive in high moisture, high organic matter situations. If conditions are right, clouds of these small black flies can be produced in the soil of a small number of violet plants. Pesticides must be used properly. Before purchasing and using a pesticide, read the label. If the wrong pesticide is used, plant damage may result, even to the extent of killing the plant. When the correct pesticide is used at a higher than labeled rate, Tissue in both petals and leaves may be burned. Plants can be severely burned. When the correct pesticide is used at the correct dosage rate, you can still get damage if an excess amount is applied to the plant. The solution runs down to a low area and collects there. As the water evaporates, the concentration increases, causing the tissue to be burned. Another problem with incorrect pesticide use is that of residue. Some pesticides, even though they cause no plant damage, may leave unsightly residues, which are difficult and time-consuming to remove. Remember, read and understand the label before using any pesticide. Despite insect problems, violet growers can grow magnificent specimens. All it takes is a little tender loving care. Remember, the best insect control on your violet is your own shop.